Hello! Today's stories come from r slash Entitled People. Today we're going back to Mad Margaret's house and continuing on with stories 5 through 8. If you missed 1 through 4, there's a link in the description to yesterday's video. Let's dive in. We'll start with Mad Margaret Part 5. Margaret meets Bailey's dad. Two months ago. So, we can get started. We have to talk about somebody first. My dad. Bailey's dad. Well, he's an interesting guy. He's not tall. He's about 5 foot 8 inches, so a bit shorter than me. And he was in the Air Force for a long time as the guy who trained other people how to survive in the wilderness. Literally wrote most of the book on how to not die away from civilization. And he fixed jets. He built his own motorcycles and got one featured in a magazine. In terms of personality, he's a force to be reckoned with. Much of the time, he thinks he's a social butterfly and will walk up to random people to start conversations. Dad has an unerring sense of justice, enjoys helping people, is loyal, and is incredibly inventive and clever. He can be rather opinionated. However, the man's got a fuse so short you'd barely believe it's there, and having trained military men in how not to die, he's got a hell of a drill sergeant voice. It's like he has the voice from the Dune series, except people tend to do what he says because he's able to shout so loudly and with such authority that you unconsciously begin doing whatever he's shouting at you about. It's like the angry voice of God. He'll love that I said that. In short, I love and respect this man, as he formed a lot of who I am today. I'm a milder version of him and believe in being persuasive rather than shouty, but ultimately much to the same effect. So with that in mind, on to the story. So dad came down to visit me or to drop something off, I can't remember, in the city where I moved. We drove around for a bit before ultimately returning to Mad Margaret's madhouse. Upon our return, I take to moving whatever he's got in his truck into my room and foolishly leave him unsupervised for more than 30 seconds. Of course, this means that Mad Margaret has crawled out of the air vents or however it was she'd move around the house to find him standing in the living room. Dad begins trying to make small talk with Mad Margaret, who I absolutely warned him about and begged him not to engage her. In retrospect, this was seen by him as an open invitation to meet a new crazy. So, how have things been with my boy moved in? Well, I'm not so sure about him. What? What's the problem? I'm not so sure he's a good kid. I don't trust him. There's been some evil in this house since he moved in. At this point, Dad begins turning a light shade of red. Ha, evil? Bailey's the best kid I've ever met. He's a straight-A student and helpful to a fault. No, I think he's definitely into some kind of paganism like all the kids going to college. Dad's now turning deeper shades of red. Fucking excuse you, I raised that kid. He's significantly smarter and kinder than I'll ever be. And even if he was Satanist, he's a million times kinder than you. At this point, I have felt the world shake and gods tremble as my dad is moments away from a shouting match with Mad Margaret. I don't need you or him bringing the devil into this house. I'm visually watching my dad turn a shade of red that even his colorblind dolt can see and quickly run in to intervene. I run up to him. Dad, outside now. We step outside. Dad, I love you, but I need you to not get into an argument with her. Why the Hades shouldn't I? She was insulting my boy. Yeah, but I have to live here for at least a couple more months. So? Why should you have to deal with this insane woman's BS? Because if I don't give her a reason to focus on me, she won't bother me much. I'm not being nice or deflective with her because I think she deserves it. I'm doing it because it doesn't benefit me at all to make enemies. I raised a smart boy, but she upsets me. Eventually, I convinced my dad to be content to give me a hug and sent him on his way. Margaret tried talking to me as soon as I went back in. I responded, Sorry, Margaret, don't care. Have homework. And I shut myself in my room. Important lesson to all, it does not benefit anyone to argue with crazy. Pick your battles by whether or not there's potential for them to benefit you in the future. As an aside, it's my dad's birthday today, and he came up here to visit. We're going skydiving tomorrow. We went out for drinks, and I asked him to reflect on Mad Margaret. You know, I don't care if people are religious. Live your life. But sweet mama, she was nuts. Relevant comments. Ah, why did you step in? The fireworks would have been spectacular. OP. I stepped in for the exact reason you wouldn't want me to. 
it would have been a meltdown of epic proportions. As amusing as that would have been, it would have made living there even more inconvenient. For context, one time my dad found a guy pulling down flags on Memorial Day and decided to start yelling at him. My dad's yelling and yelling, and the guy takes out a can of mace and maces my dad. Now, how do most people react to being maced point blank? They stop whatever they're doing and roll around on the ground in agony. Nope. My dad kept right on yelling, didn't so much as pause until the guy eventually dropped the flags and left. Someone else chuckled and said, This series has been pretty entertaining so far, I just hope it has a decent ending. OP replied, I may do a post about my moving out from Mad Margaret's house. Truth be told, unless it benefits me to be otherwise, I tend towards being non-confrontational. It wasn't a massive event and can be summarized in Thank you for letting me live here, Margaret. I hope you get the help you need, and I hope I never see you again. Okay, thanks, bye. Mad Margaret Part 6 Her Surprising, If Brief, Redemption Arc Two months ago All right, guys, sorry about the delay. I did not die while skydiving with my dad and some friends. However, I did miss the ground entirely and had to wait to re-enter the Earth's orbit before I could get back and post again. Obviously, that is a bad joke. What I mean is, life is busy. I'm taking over a big position at work, and other life stuff tends to pile up in the summer for my fiancé and her mom. I choose to write this particular story because, A, I just survived jumping out of an airplane 14,000 feet and would like to honor my health with a story that involves my health. B, all of the stories I've provided, while funny, do fail to humanize Mad Margaret. Yes, she was a nuisance, racist, and perfectly insane but she was a person with mental health problems that I'm pretty certain at least formed the solid foundation for the person she was to everyone else. On to the story. This particular story starts not at Mad Margaret's house, but rather at my girlfriend's, now fiancé's house. I had been hanging out with her all day, and by the time her mom was probably sick of playing host to a teenage boy, so I had elected to go home and work on my homework. Now, it is important to note Girlfriend's house was at the top of a very steep hill or mountain. I don't know which to call it, since hill does not do it justice, but mountain seems extreme. There were two paths down this hilly mountain, the first of which, and my primary means of access, was a long winding road with no bike lane. Unfortunately, I did not have my driver's license until a couple years later, so I biked everywhere. The second trail down the mountainous hill was a footpath that I was unfamiliar with. On this particular day, the rain had been pretty intense, and it was a bit foggy, so I decided to err on the side of safety. I'm very cautious on my bike, despite the biking culture here. I still bike like I'm living in LA, where cars view in-road cyclists as mere speed bumps. So I took the footpath. This was a huge mistake. The footpath was covered in leaves, and I was unfamiliar with it. As stated previously, this area was unforgivingly steep. So, I was cycling down the footpath very rapidly, overconfident to a fault and assured of my prowess on a bike. Well, cycling prowess means jack diddly squat when you're hurtling down a hill at about 20 miles per hour and are suddenly presented with a very sharp turn through a tunnel. I tried to lean into the turn and ease onto my brakes. Instead, my wheels slid out from under me on wet leaves and my bike and I went skidding down the asphalt for about 10 feet. After catching my breath, I immediately released it again in the form of every curse word in every language I am familiar with. Thankfully, the trees that bore witness to my wipeout took no offense. Now, it is important to know that this is all merely a prelude to my epic trek hobbling back home. Once I gathered up my bike and belongings, ensured that most of my organs were where I left them, and took inventory of how many of my inside fluids became outside fluids, I began hobbling back the mile or two to Mad Margaret's house. On the way back, I passed a preschool kindergarten and thought to myself, aha, keepers of children, those are just the demographic that typically get injured and dinged up. Perhaps they have a first aid kit I can use to keep my blood on the inside. So I hobbled up to the school and asked if they had a first aid kit that I could borrow. They gave me a pretty curt, nope, we don't have one. Now, While I am, in fact, certain that they did, I can kind of understand where they were coming from. An 18-year-old with a somewhat busted-looking bike came limping up covered in scrapes and bruises, looking somewhat like an extra in a bad zombie movie. I was annoyed but kept on limping. Eventually, I'm halfway back home and I stumble across an ambulance parked on the side of the road. I think to myself, ah, medical services. 
Certainly, these fine people will have the materials necessary so I can patch myself up and be on my way. The ambulance driver and EMT looked at me with confusion at my request. Hey guys, I kind of wiped out on my bike, my wrist hurts, I've scraped off half my palm, and I have quite a few cuts. Any chance I could borrow some band-aids and some ace bandage to patch myself up? Them. Uh, no, we can't really do that, but we could give you a ride to the hospital. Does that cost money? Depends on your insurance. The mere mention of a scary adult word like insurance sent 18-year-old Bailey back on his quest to hobble home. My final stop on the way back was at a church very near to Mad Margaret's house. I figured that at their core, religious people should want to do nice things for the less fortunate, and I was feeling less than fortunate at that moment. I pestered a priest who was leaving, who stopped long enough to grab me some ace bandages from his first aid kit before going on his way. I pocketed the bandage and decided that I needed to wash off my wounds before putting it on. I have made it to Mad Margaret's house. Now, before I start with her reaction, let me fully explain how injured I was. Skip this next paragraph if you're squeamish. I had learned later that I fractured my wrist, I had cuts all over, a big scrape on my knees and legs, and the worst of it was I had effectively scraped one of my palms down to the fat. The fleshy part of my palm on my left hand under my thumb was yellowy and purpley because there was a whole lot of hand left on the asphalt where I crashed. I enter the house to Margaret's reaction. Bailey, Bailey, are you okay? Well, a lot of my blood is on the wrong side of my skin, and I crashed. Oh my god, you look horrible! Actually, I don't suppose you have any first aid stuff, so I can start patching myself up, do you? Band-aids, rubbing alcohol, absolutely, honey, let me get the things. She ended up pouring mild hydrogen peroxide over my scraped up hand over the sink. She looked like a concerned mother and offered more help than I'd accept. She furnished me with band-aids and alcohol wipes. She helped me wrap up my injured hand after disinfecting it. After that, I excused myself to my room and finished cleaning up my remaining scrapes and covered myself in band-aids. The next day, I managed to nab a wrist brace from my fiancé's mom, who's been a nurse since forever. Mad Margaret didn't harass me for at least two days afterwards. Mad Margaret was not a monster. She was just crazy. She was the only person out of several that I asked for help in a bad situation to actually stop and help me. While laughing at her eccentricities and her borderline insane actions, remember that even the most nuts individuals can have good moments. Mad Margaret Part 7 Her Crazy Landlady One month ago. On to this chapter. First disclaimer, this is a conversation had about 10 years ago. I remember parts of the conversation very, very clearly. However, other parts, I'm probably not going to get the wording perfect. I promise, however, that I am writing it in the exact spirit of Mad Margaret and refuse to misrepresent myself or anyone in a conversation. It was a rainy day, and I foolishly decided to make myself food in the oven rather than the microwave. Now, those who have read my previous stories will immediately understand this is a terrible idea. The kitchen was a common area in the house, and Mad Margaret has a sixth sense for when people linger in such areas. If you found yourself in such an area for more than five minutes, it was nearly guaranteed that she would crawl out of some nearby vent or materialize from a nearby swarm of bats in order to harass or preach at you. No, she didn't literally materialize out of thin air. She'd either walk down the stairs or already be in the living room nearby, preaching to nobody about how everybody is going to the underworld. I saw her enter the kitchen and immediately knew that I was trapped as my taquitos had just been put in and I had 11 minutes of a nightmare standing between me and my cheap Tex-Mex salvation. Mad Margaret started her kitchen cornerings as she often did by pretending to be looking for a coffee cup. She rummaged around in cabinets for a few minutes before standing next to me to begin a conversation. So, Bailey, God help me or the devil, I don't care which anybody, how do you like living in this area? Honestly, I do love the area. I grew up in a desert, so I love having all the trees. Almost everyone here has been so nice as well. Hm, you're right, these people can seem super nice, but there's evil amongst them. It's part of the human condition. There's evil people and jerks everywhere. People can seem so nice here, but really be more evil than you can imagine. Completely ignoring what I said. Shame. 
Have I ever told you about my last landlady? Well, this I gotta hear. She seemed so nice at first, but ultimately she was very taken with the devil and absolutely crazy. Wow, that's really hard to imagine. When I first moved to the city with my young boys, we moved into a house nearby. My landlady, Asian name I can't remember, let us stay in a house she owned next door to her. Seems nice. It seemed like the perfect place for me and my boys, but I started to notice strange things. She made us take off our shoes before entering her house. Clearly, this was supposed to be a big hint that her landlady was evil. That's a pretty common practice, I think. It didn't stop there. Oh, no. Eventually, we saw her through the window doing yoga and strange poses. My goodness. After seeing her pray to the devil like this, I knew she was evil. Personally, I might need a little more evidence. This next line is literally the only reason I remember the overwhelming majority of this conversation. And I swear to Mad Margaret's mad god, that these were her exact words. Eventually, she saw me watching her do her prayers, and she took one look at me, and she tried to use her Asian ninja death breath to kill me and my boys. Her Asian ninja death breath? Yes, I asked to break the lease right there and moved out as soon as I could. She just let you break the lease? Yes. She probably wanted to be rid of me because God wouldn't let her kill me with the death breath. You know, I think that's a fair assumption. By that point, my taquitos were about ready, and I managed to grab them and scurry back to my room. Final note, Mad Margaret was not only the nuttiest of insane, but also incredibly racist. She said a multitude more of outrageous things, but honestly not enough to really fill out a full post. I mean, I guess it could, but it would be bullet points of her outrageous accusations and beliefs. The final post will not contain any of that and will instead concern my final day in her house and my leaving that house for good. Mad Margaret Part 8 The Final Chapter September 7, 2022 All right, sorry this has been a long time coming. Life got in the way. Look guys, I'm going to be honest with you. This is an epic and entertaining saga of the most insane woman I have ever met in my entire life. However, The final chapter is not the most entertaining one. Every story has to have an end, but Game of Thrones proved that it doesn't have to be a great one. My exit from Mad Margaret's house came with the very lucid realization that this woman could walk into an insane asylum and be the least sane person there. I began hunting for rooms because the concept of renting an apartment or house was still too terrifying for a freshly solo Bailey the nerd, and I came across my new future landlady, Barb. Barb had interacted with Devilish Dan, who was also looking for respite from God's own nuthouse, and had determined that he was one of the more obnoxious people on this planet. She was overjoyed to find a modest and very kind teenager who would be willing to live quietly in the separated room she had at her house. In the year I lived at Barb's, I had seen her a total of twice, despite living in the same house. It was very nice. Thus began my move. I figured it was too risky getting my dad back up there to help me move, as I did not want to give Mad Margaret a reason to attempt to purge my wickedness via fire and brimstone. So, I began the hunt for suitable help. Luckily, I found a friend who was willing to help at my college, and we got to work. I can't quite remember his name, but he was a very nice young man who was convinced he held the secret to room temperature, superconductors, via gold suspended in ferrofluid. Nice idea, but wrong. He and I hopped into his Nissan Leaf and headed to Mad Margaret's. Now, while we were there, packing up my things, Margaret gave a wonderful show of the duality of her nature by simultaneously praising Jesus that my wickedness was being exercised from her house and telling me that I was an okay young man and to avoid the evils of the world, such as community college, alcohol, and the devil's lettuce. She eyed my friend's Nissan Leaf with such suspicion during my exit because A, it was owned by a college kid, and B, she didn't trust hybrids, something about the devil powering them. Thankfully, as a poor college student, my worldly possessions fit into two trips in my friend's car. All that was left in my room was the musty furniture it came with, and the bucket I put under the constant drip from the ceiling. My final words to Mad Margaret were, Thank you for letting me stay in your home. Please seek mental help. Or so I thought. You see, I did see her one last time after that. I was working at my job at Radio Shack, 
I promise, I'm not that old. Radio Shack lasted longer than you all think. When a familiar and long drawn out, ooh, Bailey, came from the door. There she stood in all her unholy glory, mad fracking Margaret. Poop in a basket. Oh, Bailey, I didn't know you worked here. Yep, sure do. I see you got your license back. Absolutely. Actually, I was looking for... I'm sorry, Margaret. I'm actually just heading out to my lunch, but if you're still here when I get back, we can chat. I then hid in the back room for the next 30 minutes until I was certain she was gone. My manager, Roman, was quite amused, as I am typically a hard worker and would never avoid a customer. I know, I was young and not yet jaded by the wonderful world of retail. I gave him the full story when she left. Now, I'm sure you all want an epilogue as to the ultimate fate of Mad Margaret, but I am unfortunately pleased to report that I never saw her after that point. My best guess is that she got her license revoked again, and she is absolutely the type to continually harass a single person at a store if it catches her attention. She showed me her soapbox and sign that she used to bring downtown on weekends to preach to the masses. And that's it. I got out and never saw her again. I'd like to bump into her now, as I'm a much more confident adult and have nothing to lose by gently commanding her to check herself into a mental institution. But I'm just as glad to avoid her. Relevant comments. I actually love it. Most things just sorta end, and sometimes you never see someone again. OP. Thank you. Honestly, part of the reason I've procrastinated on posting it was because I was a little embarrassed that I managed to keep things so low-key upon my exit. I know that was the better way to do it, for me, but it was not the most entertaining for you guys. Maybe I should have embellished and made it more entertaining, but I'd be a hypocrite for it considering I call out obviously fake stories in Reddit all the time. Someone else said, Hopefully that's the last you'll ever see of Mad Margaret but I have a feeling that you may eventually hear about more of her escapades. That woman works at drawing attention to herself. OP replied, I kind of wish I heard back from her. I recently had to do a deep background check for work and they needed my entire housing history, including Mad Margaret's. I have no idea if they ever got into contact with her, but God, I wish they did. I'll have to ask my background investigator if he talked to her. The end. Woohoo! What a delight of a story, am I right? I hope that you share my appreciation for this epic tale. OP really did a fantastic job of endearing the reader to Mad Margaret. Yes, she had flaws, but so does everyone else. The fact that she took such care in helping OP after his bike accident demonstrates that she had kindness in her. While I do love a solid malicious compliance or petty revenge narrative, I have a soft spot for stories that remind us to see the complexity of people or a situation. Anywho, let's not get too philosophical here. On to the comments where we'll find others commending OP for his portrayal of dear mad Margaret. Tater Snuffy said, I will live in a ditch before I live with roommates again. Jess Purse said, same. There is a point in everyone's life where it becomes clear the extra money is worth the piece. Someone else added, I told my mom I'd rather do adult films than have roommates again. My mom is a prude, but she said she understands. Someone else added, I think the most interesting part of all this is the implication that the reason this kid is the most zen human being in the world is very likely a direct result of having some kind of boss-level drill instructor for a father. Also, his mom isn't mentioned at all, yet you can deduce the exact type of person she must be, and it's oddly delightful. Boring History fan said, I have to admit, usually my instincts on sagas are to dismiss them. Far too many people write too farm and it's obvious. But gosh darn, this had to be among the most realistic crazy stories I've read. The people seem real, and the resolutions are logical. I think the most convincing for me is the bit where she helps OP out. He's right that people are rarely completely evil. Margaret is demonstrably not a good person. But you get too many saga writers whose villains are so comedically evil that it becomes obvious they're caricatures nor are there usually great epic conclusions in life. The ending seals it for me as believable. Then again, maybe I'm just biased because the writing here was so good. I could see and hear these things happening. If OP wrote a novel, I would absolutely read it. Someone else added, I think what sells it for me is OP never like played into it. 
just kind of tried to avoid her and not react, and that sort of story is one you could see happening easily. If you've enjoyed the story and would like to hear more, consider liking, subscribing, and leaving a comment. Thanks, and bye for now.